Match moving is an essential skill to learn when you are doing VFX work. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I use Blender to track and solve this particular shot. So let's get on to it. So let's take a look at the uh, footage that we are using. I'm going to use DJV, which is a very good free image viewer to take a look at the image sequence. I'm going to play it back at 25 frames per second because this is what the shot was taken at. Now before I take in this shot, I have a plan of what kind of effect I want to see in this shot. So for example, I'm imagining something sitting on this uh, rooftop car park and taking off and then flying away. The camera I'm using is a Canon 5D Mark III that is modified with the uh, Magic Lantern software so it's able to shoot with RAW and also at a maximum resolution and color depth. So this will help the tracker to grab on to the details of the shot and I have to be very careful not to move the camera too much otherwise it will introduce things like rolling shutter or too much motion blur and that will give us problems in tracking this shot okay so let me just go through this shot very quickly now when I took this shot I have to make sure that I have some forward motion and sideways motion especially in this area so that I can give enough information for the software to solve the free camera motion and at this point I was standing still and panning the camera from right to left and this will be considered like a almost a nodal or tripod pan okay but if you notice carefully there's still a little bit of parallax going on now parallax is very important in match moving so if your if your live plate doesn't have any parallax or it doesn't have any features for the trackers to grab onto then it is very difficult for the software to calculate the 3d position of the camera okay so I was very careful when I was taking the shot I have to make sure that I have some or I have enough information for the camera to track or rather for the tracker to track and then to solve okay so let me just load this shot so this is the uh, completed shot over here and all the trackers you see right here although blender is capable of tracking or detecting all the features but I choose to track all these points manually one by one that means I supervise every individual tracker here so in total I manually track 44 trackers throughout this shot now this shot in total is about 223 frames so 223 frames for a visual effects shot is pretty long so if you calculate that to be about 25 frames per second it is almost almost a nine seconds or eight seconds in length so that's that's actually pretty long for a effects shot okay so I'm gonna start from the beginning and then we are going to uh, work through step by step on how to solve this so I'm gonna start with a new VFX layout in blender and then I'm going to bring in the image sequence so I'm going to click on the first frame and then I'm going to open the clip and then I'm going to click on set scene frames and prefetch so that it will load up into my memory or load up into the computer's memory so that I can scrub the shot quickly and you notice the color looks a bit washed out so we need to go to adjust the color management and change it from filmic to standard so we'll bring back the original colors and from here on we can actually start to do the tracking now this process is going to take a long time so I'll probably speed this up but I'll be tracking all the trackers one by one and then when I'm done then we'll 
I'll come back and explain how I solve the shot. So first of all, let's go and set the uh, tracker motion. So the first thing I want to do is I want to track this forward motion here. I want to track all these features here so that I'll give enough information for the software, in this case, uh, Blender's tracker to solve. So there are plenty of very good features around here. There are features that are far away and then there are features that are close to the camera. So for the motion model type, I find that uh, either a fine or perspective is really good. Um, for a quick explanation, location will just check, will just track the location of the feature. So if the feature is becoming bigger or smaller or if it rotates, then you want, might want to change to any of these other uh, tracking uh, motion models. Now a fine will track when there is a pattern that actually stretches or becomes skewed. And finally, perspective will track for perspective changes. Okay, so the tracker that I like to use most is perspective, although it is much slower compared to location and location rotation and scale, but it is very, very accurate. And uh, for match, I'm not gonna use keyframe. Keyframe is whenever you change the position of the tracker, a keyframe will be generated on the tracking dope sheet or you manually move the tracker to, uh, to the feature itself and that will generate a new keyframe. So we are not going to match keyframe but we're going to match the previous frame and uh, we're going to enable normalize. Uh, Pre-pass is already uh, enabled by default and then normalize basically will change every frame's uh, lighting right to be equalized so that uh, there is no drastic lighting changes. And for the tracking settings extra, the correlation, I want to put it at 0 0.9. Okay, that is to make it a little bit stricter so that it will only, uh, it will continue to track if the tracker is only, uh, is 90% uh, accurate to the previous frame. Right, so right now I'm gonna start to track start from frame one and then I'll create my first tracker. I'm gonna increase a bigger pattern size. I'm gonna uh, use maybe 40 and then search size. I'm gonna use maybe 140 or 144. Okay, so I'm gonna track something that is easy first. Holding down the control and left mouse click, I'm gonna track this corner here. And if you go over to the track tab here, you should be able to see the thumbnail or smaller picture in greater detail of the feature that I'm tracking. So I'm tracking this uh, corner here. And also I wanna look at the search box. So I'm gonna press Alt S to bring up the search box. So this search box is a little bit small. I want to, the search area is a little bit small, but the uh, area of interest, which is this smaller box here, uh, I'm gonna adjust it a little bit so that to match the perspective uh, of this uh, feature. So what I do is to adjust this to match the perspective of the shot or rather the feature. So notice that I change it to look like a diamond shape and this diamond shape itself is actually uh, what this square would look like if it's lying flat on this feature. And if you look at the thumbnail itself, the feature itself look as if you are looking down at the feature from the top view. So I'm gonna increase the size of this search box and then I'm gonna start at uh, the first frame, let's go to the first frame and I'm going to move the feature or rather move the tracker until it is at the corner here and then I'm going to get rid of this uh, this keyframe so I'm going to click on this button here clear track path ahead because earlier on I didn't start at frame uh, frame 1 so right now I'm at frame 1 and now I'm going to track forward now you can use these buttons to track forward but but I like to use the shortcut keys. So to track forward is Control T, and you can see that it tracks, and then it uh, the feature goes out of the screen, which is normal. And then in order to see that it stays on the feature, I'm going to press the L key to lock the tracker in the center of the screen. So as I scrub the timeline forwards and backwards, I also want to take a look at the thumbnail and make sure that this yellow cross here is stuck right at the corner. Okay, this is the hallmarks of uh, supervised tracking. You want to make sure that every single track that you track all along is 100% accurate. There must not be any deviation at all. 
Okay, if you notice any deviation, which uh, later in some of the other trackers that you will see, when they start to move along, um, then you have to manually shift them into place. And also, I want to let you in on uh, this uh, industry practice. When I worked at Industrial Light and Magic, as a layout match move artist, we never use any uh, automatic detect uh, features. Okay, I know that Blender can detect features and then uh, we can track this shot very quickly, but we're going to spend a lot of time doing a lot of cleanup work. So in uh, when I was working in ILM, uh, we never used any of the automatic features. We have to track every single tracker manually and we have to solve it uh, with all manually supervised trackers. Now, ra the rationale is very simple. If you track every tracker manually, the chances of you getting a much uh, more accurate solve is higher. Uh, rather than you uh, let the computer shoot trackers all over the place and then uh, do the manual tracking and then you have to spend time looking for bad trackers and cleaning them up. So if you start off by laying down very good accurate trackers, the chances of you getting a much more accurate solve is much higher. Alright, so now I'm just going to continue to uh, track this. I'm going to close this window here. I'm going to I'm going to continue to track this. I'm probably going to spend the next uh, one hour uh, tracking to get all the uh, trackers in. So now I got this tracker in and I'm going to go back to frame one again. And then if you are done with tracking, then you can click on the lock symbol here to lock it so that you will not accidentally move it. So I'm going to look for another feature here and maybe I will pick this number here. Holding down the control, left mouse click, and then I'm going to press S to scale this up a little bit. And then I'm going to rotate this. And then again, now this uh, changing of the shape of the tracker is not really necessary. Okay, but uh, for me, it's just a practice for me to get the shape to match the perspective distortion of the feature that I want to track, especially if you have feature that is lying flat on the ground or on the side of the wall. So I'm just distorting this uh, point of interest so that it matches the matches the distortion of the perspective okay so now I got this uh, in place then and you notice that my tracker has become uh, really big now one thing about the perspective tracker is that if you uh, if you give it a very large search area generally it's going to become much slower in tracking so right now I'm going to go to uh, frame one Okay, I think I'm not in frame one. I'm going to go to frame one. Then I'm going to click on the center of this tracker and then just drag it into place. And again, because I didn't start at frame one, I'm going to delete away this uh, keyframe at frame uh, frame two by clicking on this key here. And then now I can start to track forwards. So to track forward, the shortcut key is control T. And the same thing is going to happen again. We're going to reach the end uh, or rather the feature is going to reach the end and then uh, is going to stop tracking and also one thing I noticed about the perspective tracker is whenever the area of interest box the edges touches the search area box border it's going to stop tracking so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to scale this down now you can scrub the timeline back and forth just to ensure that the tracker is on point and then I'm just going to scale this down so that I'm only tracking number five and I can and I can also bring down the uh, search box and then I can continue to uh, track forwards which I'm going to click over here and then it's going to track forward and then that's it and generally the tracker is still staying it staying put okay so right now i'm gonna go to the point uh, where it ends okay and then i'm just gonna lock this now notice every time if you look over there at the dope sheet every time i do any changes to the tracker a white diamond will appear and this white diamond is is known as the keyframe so the keyframe will appear every time you shift the location of the tracker when you need to reposition it to track or when you change the size of the search area and the area of interest okay so now these two trackers are now uh, tracked now i'm going to move on to the next feature maybe i'm going to track this uh, this paint here this painted area here and then i'm going to increase the search box and then just rotate this at a diamond shape now i'm not going to change the uh, I'm not going to change the diamond shape to match the floor distortion and we're going to just track forwards and backwards and see why it, how it goes now notice I didn't start at frame one this time but it is fine I can track backwards 
okay and then I can track forwards again until it disappears and you can see that it's fairly fast because the uh, search is quite small and you notice that because I created the uh, the tracker without changing the shape to match the perspective if you look at this thumbnail it will always try to maintain the shape of this uh, feature okay at its original perspective distortion so this is one thing that is very interesting but it has done a good job and but towards the last the last track point doesn't look very good okay so I'm gonna delete away this uh, this key by clicking on here clear everything after this frame you can use your cursor key to navigate between uh, each frames okay as of now yeah I don't like this shift you can see this shift is quite quite apparent so I'm gonna delete by clicking clear the last frame okay so now the last frame is cleared and then I can lock this tracker okay and then now I can go and look for another good tracker to track so maybe I'll track maybe this one over here Okay, so if you want to track forwards is control shift t I'm gonna track backwards control shift t control t to track forwards okay and then we have one tracker point that suddenly it stops because i think the border right the edge is touching so i'm gonna just increase the search box size a little bit and press control t again and then it tracks all the way to the end and just make sure that the last track is good so you can use your cursor keys to check and make sure that it is stuck to the center okay all right so this one is well tracked we can lock this one so we got one uh, four trackers late now so I'm just basically just gonna continue to track all these points uh, okay maybe I'm gonna start from here and then you can start from uh, you don't necessarily have to start from the first frame all the time you can start from uh, frame 30 or you can start from where the last uh, uh, trackers right uh, start to disappear from the screen so I'm gonna maybe track maybe this feature here okay then control shift T to track backwards and then control T to track forwards and then we can lock this one this one looks really good and I can press uh, this lock here or you can press control L if the tracker is selected press control L to lock it okay it's important that you lock the trackers otherwise if you accidentally move them uh, then you will introduce errors okay so let's track this feature here this uh, yellow and black uh, triangle features and then I think I still want to distort this tracker until it matches the perspective distortion basically you just want to track a sharp point or a high contrast feature and most important of all a stationary feature so control T to track forward and this one looks good it is staying put it's very accurate and you notice that my camera uh, lens is exhibiting some uh, lens distortion later we will take into account of that when we are solving so we can lock this one as well control L and let's move on to the next tracker point now if you have a very good pattern if you notice that there's a nice pattern uh, on especially on this concrete right um, another type of motion model that you can try to use is the a, a fine okay so the a fine can uh, also track 
perspective shift so let's uh, look for a pattern that we can track maybe this uh, dark ridges here okay maybe I'll just track one pattern this dark edge here scale it up a little bit press S to scale it up and then we will do the perspective distortion and to see what type of motion model this tracker is going at you can click on the track settings and you can see that this is using a fine and then we're going to try to see how well it sticks to this uh, dark spot or this pattern here so uh, I'm starting from frame 1 so I'm going to press ctrl T and then let's see how well it goes and it, it sticks pretty well until the uh, the search box of interest or the uh, area of interest the edge touches the search search box the border of the search box then it will stop so I'm gonna press control Ctrl T and actually it tracks the pattern really well so you can see that although there's not much uh, high contrast stuff here a fine will usually do a good job in tracking uh, these patterns okay so right now I just want to scale this down a little bit and reduce the search area and then press ctrl T again and then just they track a few more frames just before it disappears from the screen and this one is good so I'm going to lock that one okay so now I'm gonna track maybe uh, some points at this corner here maybe I'll track this point here and maybe distort it to match the perspective distortion and then press ctrl T and it tracks pretty fast and it's quite you can see a little bit of sliding going on there so that is something which I don't really like so I want to get rid of that just delete so if you feel that your tracker is not good not accurate enough then maybe the a fine doesn't work for this one then you change to another uh, motion model and then this time I'm gonna use uh, perspective instead so I'm gonna holding down the control left mouse click scale this on slightly and maybe do some perspective distortion here like that and then I press Ctrl T and you can see that there is some motion blur or distortion okay so what you do is you use your cursor key to go back to the last track that you have problems with okay just before it start to go uh, or stop tracking right you can uh, change the shape but try not to move the center if you look at the uh, the thumbnail if it's staying put there then you can leave it there only just before the frame start to go uh, go out go out of frame you can go and change the shape of the area of interest and maybe increase the size of the search area and then press ctrl T and then it should okay track all the way to the end okay there's a little bit of sliding okay but I think later on we can adjust the weight uh, during solving for this then I can uh, lock this tracker you can click on the lock here or press ctrl L just to lock it and you notice on the dope sheet here this region now has changed into the yellow or yellow green region which means from frame 0 to frame uh, 20 uh, 25 or 29 uh, we are ready to actually solve this section but for the rest of the shot itself which is about uh, 223 frames we still require trackers uh, well spread trackers right to continue to solve this shot so I'm gonna I'm going to continue to track uh, these trackers okay again going to frame one and then I'm going to perhaps uh, track this Okay, maybe something further. Okay, the corner of this mosque tower. Okay, just want to make sure that it's tracking that corner. Alright, that's fine. Then I can press Ctrl T 
and then I think this is perspective this is fine I'm going to scale this up slightly and then press ctrl T and go back one more frame and then maybe readjust the tracker and press ctrl T until it tracks uh, till the end so it can scrub back and forth and then uh, with the L key pressed to lock it at the center you can inspect to check that it is really locked to the center here okay so this one is good we can press L to sorry control L to lock it Okay, and then uh, let's continue to track. Okay, perhaps uh, a few more points on the ground itself. Maybe this this point here. And again, I like to distort it to match the perspective. So this one will be like a really, really flat diamond in order to match the perspective maybe scale this up a little bit again okay, this is not uh, necessary but it's just a habit of mine okay so I'm not going to track forward control T and it's locking down pretty good until the this area of interest touches the border so i'm going to just push this back a little bit and press ctrl t again and it should track all the way to the end which it did and i'm going to inspect the last frame make sure that it is good i kind of not really don't really trust the last frame you can see there's a shift there so this one will introduce error so i'm going to clear the last frame and then i'm going to lock this So, um, although it might appear to be very tedious that I'm tracking one by one, uh, one tracker at a time, and it looks like it's going to take a long time. And uh, but the thing is, uh, with the with enough patience and with enough patience and with a good supervision of uh, good quality trackers, the chances of you getting a much better solve is getting higher and higher. Okay, so right now I see this uh, big yellow feature here which is this uh, this arrow indicator direction indicator on the, the ground so I'm going to track the corner here and again I'm going to distort this to match the perspective distortion so basically I'm just going to cover this entire shape here until I'm tracking the corner of this uh, arrow hit and then this is actually frame one so I'm gonna press ctrl T and it should track all the way until it disappears and it's actually sticking sticking like super glue so it's fantastic it's not sliding at all and right down to the last frame okay no shift at all okay good then I will lock this one Okay, at this point you can see uh, we have a lot of features on, on top of this uh, flat here that we can track. But also, we also we are also losing the, a lot of the trackers, right, that will give us parallax information to solve the uh, motion of the camera. So I want to maybe track other features, right, that are like uh, set at a different location, like maybe this lamp post over here. So I'm going to track this uh, maybe... Uh, this feature over here scale it down so that it is much more obvious maybe the center of this line here then increase the search area box press ctrl T and then see how far it goes okay it's tracked over here so the, the issue with this one not tracking is because you notice the background is changing quite a bit so it is not able to track very well so maybe I want to track another location Okay, so I'm going to go back, I'm going to clear this tracker's uh, information and then I'm going to maybe shift it to another part of the lamp, maybe at this, the edge here 
okay and then let's see how it goes and it seemed to go further a little bit more okay but I noticed a bit of sliding so maybe in the end that might not be a good feature to track okay let's get rid of this one and let's find another location to track you can see a very slight dark spot over there hopefully it's able to track that location I'm going to increase the area of interest and maybe uh, I want to track only the red okay let's you can click on different color channels and then see which one appear to be more contrasty this is green this is blue this is red it seems that red is much more contrasty so I'm going to track red the red channel and press ctrl T to track forwards and let's see how far it goes okay so far so good it's tracking at the center is sliding a little bit and then maybe I'll just want to reshape this a little bit I'll clear everything after this and then control T again to track and then again there's one frame that is a bit off okay maybe because it's the, the cloud behind that is causing this uh, issue so I'm gonna clear this maybe reduce the size of this uh, search area hopefully this one went further a little bit okay and you can see the perspective is changing quite a bit and then maybe control T a few more frames change the search area location and then track forward again okay right now I'm just simply adding too many keyframes for this uh, particular uh, feature and and it's actually not really sticking to the correct location that the way I, the way I want it okay it should be sticking to this black dot okay, I'm gonna clear this clear this one and then I'm gonna try to um, track it frame by frame or not really track it by frame by frame uh, the practice is you do not track it frame by frame because if you try frame by frame and if you are not it's, if it's not accurate uh, you're going to just introduce more errors instead so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to try to track a few frames at a time manually just by clicking here okay and then this one is good so I'm going to move forward one more frame track one more frame so click on this button here to track one frame at a time or I think the shortcut key is control right arrow if I'm not mistaken control shift right arrow no it's not it's called jump to frame let me see is it control alt right arrow or alt right arrow yes alt right arrow is the uh, track track forwards okay there is a shift over here it's a slight shift over here so I'm gonna just move this up a little bit manually and then alt right to track frame by frame alt Okay, alt right again alt right uh, arrow okay I can see a bit of shift okay this one should be going up over here okay I'm gonna use the arrow keys right to just check that my my point is sticking or my tracker is sticking it's going to the last keyframe alt right cursor alt right cursor just to continue to track one frame at a time and I just want to reshape this so right now I'm just keeping a very close eye to make sure that it sticks to that little dark spot over there so alt right key so when I was working at ILM this is pretty much what we do all day long okay for every every shot that's given to us to track right so okay you can see that this one has deviated quite a bit this one should be here you can hold on you can hold on to shift key and left mouse click to have a much more finer movement around this area and then we can make sure that the uh, 
the tracker points are in the correct location. Holding down the shift and then left mouse click here, make sure that the arrow stays at the right location. And then Alt, right mouse click. And then we can still add one more point here. To add a tracker manually, you can left mouse click on this area. And then you just manually click and drag until the tracker point touches here. So now we finally got this uh, lamppost tracked okay, as accurately as we can. Although in the end, we have to add a lot of manual keyframes. So sometimes when you are tracking a plate, a live plate with a lot of things like smoke or where the feature is being obscured um, by a lot of, um, let's say there's a lot of pyrotechnics going on in the, the actual plate itself. Okay, so sometimes you have to make your own judgment or when there's a lot of motion blur, you have to make your own judgment to move the tracker to track the correct location. All right, so I'm going to lock this one, then I can proceed to track other features. Okay, so these features here are also good for tracking. These are hard corner points. So I'm going to track this one. Control, left mouse click. And then I'm just going to distort this slightly. Increase the search area and I press Control T. And this one search very easily. And they are staying put. Okay, no weird, no weirdness going on. Okay, is there a slight shift over here? Okay, no, I can lock this. Okay, so you can see a lot of tracker points actually track all, all the way beyond this red zone here. Red zone means that there's not enough trackers to solve these uh, areas here. So what we are trying to create is like there are a lot of uh, overlapping tracker points that appear in frame. Minimum, you need about eight trackers right before uh, Blender will solve. Okay, so now on, on top of this mosque here, we have this uh, star and sickle, which is a great uh, feature to track. So I'm going to track this star and sickle. Or rather, a star and a crescent, not a star circle. Okay, so Control T, and then it should track all the way. Okay, so it actually stop tracking. So I'm going to use another motion model because uh, this one, the shape remains quite constant. So I'm going to change the motion model to a uh, maybe a location, location and scale perhaps, and then I'm going to. Actually, for, for these settings, this is for creating new uh, trackers. I'm going to have to change the motion model over here. So I'm going to change the location and scale. And then I'm just going to press Ctrl T again and track. And this time you can see that it tracks much, much better. Because this object is quite far away and then uh, actually it sticks pretty well. So I can lock this one. And in fact, I'm going to just stick with location and scale for all these uh, features that are quite far away. So again, I'm going to try to track one more, uh, this uh, window edge here, or the vent edge here. And then let's see how far we can go with this uh, location and scale motion model, Control T. And actually it tracks pretty well. Okay, there's not much change in the scale, okay, but it is quite locked down. It's a little bit of sliding but we can work with this one so let's uh, track that one. Okay so I want to track a few more trackers on the road um, or rather on the car park. So let's track maybe uh, this this feature over here. Maybe something that is further away, like this corner here. Okay, again, I'm using the uh, location scale. Actually, I'm going to just use location and see how well it will track. Location is usually quite fast. So I'm going to just track backwards from here. So Control Shift T to track backwards, see how far it goes. Okay, so it actually tracks a few frames before it. it's actually sliding, which is not good. So I'm going to get rid of this track and then I'm going to change the motion model to perspective instead. And uh, let's track backwards, control shift, uh, control shift T and it is not tracking. So let me undo that and let's try uh, tracking 
tracking forwards a few frames alt right mouse click forward a few frames and it seems to track forwards pretty well so let's use a cursor key to go back and alt left mouse click and we are tracking frame by frame okay and until it start to go haywire here and then we need to change the shape of the search area change the shape of the area of interest then alt left cursor and then here it's the go haywire again and we want to get rid of the frame that goes haywire and then maybe change the shape of this area of interest again and alt left mouse to continue to track until it reaches the first frame and this one is fine okay so we fix this and it's st staying put then we can lock this and now you know this reg this region here it started to turn into this uh, dark gray okay it's, it's different from this color here this color means that there's nothing to solve this one is not enough uh, trackers to solve this one is enough trackers to solve and this one is like okay we have more than enough trackers here and uh, we will definitely be able to solve from this range of 0 to 20 something all right so this is how you read this uh, dope sheet okay so let's continue all right so this time i want to track a uh, Okay, I'm going to track the uh, building that is further away. Well, actually, I want to track this. Okay, because I know how this is going to pan out. What I'm going to track is I'm going to track this uh, lamp post here. Okay, the reason is because when the camera pans up, there's not a lot of information to show the camera uh, moving in parallax mode. But actually, in reality, right, the camera actually stops moving, or rather, I stop moving as a camera person right around this time which you can see indicated by the this lamp over here all right the lamp just stops showing parallax okay so this lamp is a very good uh, tool to keep track of the uh, the parallax so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do going to first frame I'm gonna track this the neck here I'm gonna scale this down slightly and then I'm just going to manually track frame by frame so holding down to alt then left mouse click and then just hope that it tracks forward and then you can see that it is sliding which is not a good sign uh, because the motion model is location scale so let me just go back to the first frame and then I'm going to delete away my tracks I'm going to change the motion model to uh, let's try perspective and then press alt and then left mouse right mouse click to track forward or rather right cursor to track forward and then here it goes haywire so we are going to be very careful in tracking this I just want to track this feature as closely as I can okay and then I'm going to clear everything after here and alt right mouse to continue to track then I'm gonna at the same time I'm just gonna reshape this alt right cursor alt right cursor So this portion here is a bit tedious but it is necessary okay we got a bit of explosion going on you just go crazy here so I'm gonna delete after this and then press alt okay here we really need to get rid of this one and maybe change the shape of our area of interest then alt Okay, now it is tracking. So you notice I'm very careful not to touch the center of the uh, tracker point because this will change the uh, position of the uh, the tracker. So let me just go over here a little bit more.
Okay, this one I have to manually move it to the center here. Okay, at this point I think I stopped walking and then I'm reaching the end and that's the last frame. Okay, we got some weird frames going around there. Let me try to take a look. Um, I think I think it's correct. Okay, maybe there's a few a bit sliding somewhere, but maybe I'll just give. You can see a lot of key frames are being added. Okay, but that's fine for now. This is uh, just an insurance for me to make sure that I can track the uh, the parallax. Okay, so maybe another feature that I want to track is uh, maybe something uh, I can start to track features on on this building itself, like this one. This one is very contrasty. Okay, hold on to control, left mouse click. Okay, this one is location scale motion model. Let me undo that. I want to use a perspective. And then, okay, wait, actually, I don't have to use perspective. Let me undo that. I'm gonna change it to just good old location. Because at this point, these are quite far away. Uh, so they, the scale will not change too much and uh, location should be sufficient. So I'm gonna track maybe the corner of this uh, this window here and then press ctrl T and you can see that it tracks very very well it's actually staying put very well this sliding a little bit towards the end but just a few frames so if you're if you're concerned about that uh, we can come over to this frame and then you can holding down the shift manually move it here and then we can track it backwards so alt holding alt uh, left mouse but uh, you notice that the entire track has completely disappeared let me undo that okay I want to try to track backwards by one frame okay that's not a that's not a good thing to do because <laughs> once I do that uh, the uh, the entire track disappears so okay maybe I'll just try to track it to move manually move it the last few frames before they start to shift okay so I think only the last few frames have shifted okay so that's good so I'm gonna use uh, continue to use uh, the uh, location to track okay maybe this one Basically, I just want to pick some high contrast points. Uh, these were, are generally much easier to stay locked on. And again, this one is pretty much okay. Okay, there's a little bit of sliding towards the end, but I think I'm going to ignore that. Okay, this one is no good. This last track point is actually shifted. So I'm going to get rid of this last frame. So clear that one. And everything else looks fine. Then I'm going to lock and just lock the trackers. And maybe this time I want to track this blue fabric that is over the edge. And since it's, well, I know it's blue, so I'm going to track the blue channel of this and see how far it goes. And actually it sticks pretty well. Okay, it's fluttering, fluttering a, a little bit in the wind, but generally it sticks well. So I'm going to lock this one as well. So basically from this frame onwards when I stop uh, moving right is a uh, nodal camera already so I will just start to track all these other features like the corner okay let me just start from the beginning of the frame I just want to track objects right which I can clearly see or uh, which has a very uh, contrasting color like maybe this laundry over here 
this yellow dot over here and let's track the colors and see how it goes and generally it's okay there's a bit of sliding towards the end but using the good old location is okay so I'm gonna lock this one again just to give me more information I really want to track another lamp post that is very far away which is this one over here okay let's see scale this down slightly I want to track the head of this lamp post because it's quite far away it should uh, be quite stable so I'll press ctrl T to track forward and it doesn't want to track forward uh, it tracks a few frames forwards and it stops here so maybe I'll just uh, rescale this a little bit and then see pressing alt right cursor key okay it doesn't want to track anymore so I'll left mouse click on this thumbnail and then I'll use the cursor to compare the last frame and my manual frame so which I have to manually move then using the cursor key left right to check that before uh, tracking frame by frame so I'm going to press alt right cursor and then just manually track frame by frame until it goes haywire again okay so at this frame here maybe I'll try changing the size of the area of interest and the search area alt right mouse click again and I think I can see some light changes so maybe that's why it uh, it stops tracking alt okay now again I want to manually put the keyframe again so I click on this empty area then holding down the shift left, left mouse click and then drag it to the uh, last frame last uh, keyframe location so which is about here so use the left right again and you can see that there's a common some kind of color change that's why it causes there's a color shift going on that causes the uh, the track to uh, stop tracking maybe I'll switch over to the red channel again and then hopefully it will continue to track and it does okay until to this point and again one more time left mouse click here again use uh, left right cursor to check where's the last location okay and then continue to track holding to the, down the alt right mouse click and it should continue to track until it disappears from the screen so again uh, the next keyframe I have to manually place it again and this one you can see because of the uh, motion blur it starts to lose the track maybe I'll turn on all the color channels and then okay now this one is sh has shifted a bit I'm gonna move this back a bit and we are going to continue to track until we reach the end or when the lamp post the lamp uh, disappears from the screen okay so that's good now this lamp post is quite critical now uh, I just realized that the uh, the early frames right are sliding like this one here so I want to fix that I'm gonna get rid of the uh, tracks from this direction onwards and then uh, I'm gonna try to press alt left mouse click and see what happens no that's not good good thing you notice that the uh, the track points right will disappear so I'll have to go back to the beginning and then left mouse click to establish a keyframe and then track the feature that I know and then I have to just now I press a keyboard combination I think it's alt control alt okay jump to frame no not this one uh, okay so far I do not know why it's the I do not know the shortcut to jump to the next keyframe so I will I will try to find uh, the last tracked keyframe which is this one 
so the track position is uh, around this position okay so I'm gonna go back to the first frame and I had to move this roughly to this position unfortunately I couldn't jump between uh, the two keyframes uh, basically I couldn't jump between this keyframe and this keyframe so I have to manually go and pull this back and forth and then just visually establish the first keyframe and then I'll have to manually holding down the alt right mouse button and then track okay so this one is not correct I should bring it forward a little bit okay and then so far I'm able to track by holding down the alt right mouse click and then we have linked up with the track keys okay there's a bit of sliding going on but I think this will help us in our solve uh, later on okay so I'm gonna lock this one and I'm gonna proceed to tracking other features so you can see so far we are at 21 and uh, my successful solve took about 40 over track so basically we're only halfway there okay so this is I'm probably gonna speed this up uh, in the video edit okay so another good point to track would be these uh, block of flats that are very very far away so I'm gonna track uh, using uh, I think location is fine I'm gonna try location and track this pattern here this is quite um, quite a nice looking pattern I'm gonna track backwards first control shift T then shift T to track forwards control T rather to track forwards and it should stay put and which it does it doesn't deviate there is actually a bit of sliding going on maybe because of this pipe right so I'm gonna maybe track something else I don't like this sliding okay, because I know that any sliding on the trackers will introduce errors so I'm gonna get rid of this uh, track change the motion model to something else maybe change it to a fine and maybe I want to reduce the size of the area of interest to the spot right where it is not being interfered by this pole over here so maybe I want to track this spot here and then try uh, control T and then track forward and a fine fails so I'll try perspective control T again and it doesn't want to track all right so maybe I'll increase the area a bit control T doesn't want to track as well um, maybe I'll try location and location again this time hopefully this one doesn't affect the track and it doesn't want to track okay I'm gonna get rid of this and now sometimes if the the tracker doesn't want to cooperate then maybe it's time to just create another new tracker and try again okay I'm gonna try location again because this work uh, pretty well for me previously but this time I try to avoid this pole here then I'm gonna try control T and then see how it goes it only tracked until this area here okay because this building is starting to interfere with the features so I'm gonna try one more time and this time it works and I think this one is much better it doesn't slide all right it just move yeah it is quite it's barely visible even if there is a tr uh, if, even if there is a uh, slight movement so I like this one I can lock this one another area which I would like to track is you can see this corner over here if you observe okay because this gives me good parallax information and parallax is what we want we want lots of parallax so I'm gonna track uh, this corner here okay I'm gonna track this region here I'm gonna scale this down and then I'm going to just manually track using position location okay location doesn't want to work with me so I'm gonna try something else try uh, perspective this up slightly 
and then I'm going to try to track forwards and again this one doesn't want to cooperate so let's try something else uh, let's try a find uh, previous frame this is fine uh, I'm going to track this feature here okay kind of change the scale of this and hopefully this one will cooperate so I'm going to press alt right arrow to manually track and so far so good just going to manually track and keeping my eye focused on that corner and making sure it doesn't deviate all right so this time it it stopped tracking so I go back to the last successful track and then change the shape of my tracker maybe you can increase or reduce the size of the search area and then change the shape of your area of interest and then holding down to alt right cursor to continue to track and I think this is good I'm going to reach the edge and this might cause the track to fail which is uh, expected and we are going to manually add a keyframe and then drag the tracker until to the correct location so again we're going to use the the two cursor tangle back and forth to position it to the correct location And holding down the shift to adjust this more finely and this one looks good then holding down the alt right cursor key and then we're going to continue to track and then this time you can see that my uh, feature is going down very close to the edge and which is not very good I'm going to try to bring this down here and then continue to track okay now again I have to manually move it back into place again now these features are very important because I need them to reconstruct my uh, camera movement oops let me undo that okay I shouldn't have tracked backwards because that means that it will destroy my previous uh, previous track to location so this one needs to be higher a little bit okay this is good this is good all right alt right cursor key okay so now this one the uh, the fine has distorted quite a bit so I'm just trying to change it back again Okay, let me just go back to the last frame and I think it is completely rotated itself which is not supposed to be like that so let me just change the shape back again well actually you notice that this has flipped so this is not a good sign let me just <laughs> press ctrl z to undo that Okay, so Alt, right mouse click, manually track again. And hopefully this time it will stay put and which it does. And that's good. this is a good sign. So we're nearing the edge and then finally we're clear okay so now we can lock this tracker so how are we doing on the uh, okay it seems that we have a red zone at frame zero zero to one since we are not solving from zero we are starting from frame one so that's fine okay i see a red zone over here okay right so we still have a long way to go but now I have um, a lot of information to solve the parallax for my camera in the beginning part of this so I can now start to track the other features and one of the features that I noticed that is very obvious is this red red object on the window here and I'm gonna just track the red channel here and press ctrl T and it should track all the way 
and a fine is doing a good job okay tracking the uh, skewing okay I think we can lock this All right now we're coming uh, entering the other zone so we're gonna try to track other features here like uh, there's a very obvious uh, like a cross here and I'm going to try to control left mouse click and track this feature can press R to rotate until it matches the shape here I'm going to track the center here then I'm going to track forwards control T and it doesn't want to track I'm just increase the search area control T and it start to search and then right down to this point control shift T to track backwards until it reappears okay this looks good and I can lock this one a fine I find that the fine motion model generally will track patterns uh, that stretch and skew very very well okay so I'm going to use that to track all my uh, corners or edges like uh, for example this this corner here okay for this corner I think I will change to a location okay I'll just come to the point where it start to appear then maybe track this corner here okay and press ctrl T and it actually tracks pretty well but it is sliding and I don't like sliding so the location doesn't work for me here I get rid of this tracker and then change to a perspective and control left mouse click and maybe I want to track the perspective shape scale this up a little bit like so and then press ctrl T and then see how far it goes and actually it sticks pretty well okay it's not sliding at all then ctrl shift T to track backwards and it actually blows up right about here let's go to the point where it stops then maybe we want to increase the search area then control shift T and it reaches the end point okay start to it actually jumps a bit okay I don't like the jump when it jumps right it's it changes position okay right about here I'm gonna get rid of the tracks after this and maybe I just want to scale this up a little bit and then track backwards see what happens okay it doesn't want to cooperate so let's give it a nudge and one more nudge here maybe scale this up a little bit okay and then maybe this time scale this down and then manually track back a few frames and I think this is fine and we can lock this one okay so you can see um, if the motion model doesn't work for you then you can try changing the motion model and or just start from a new tracker with a different motion model okay this corner is good I'm gonna track this corner with a uh, let's try a fine for this one okay and I want to track this pattern here but because it's quite distinct okay first I'll track forwards and then I'll go back to the first point and then I'm gonna track backwards Control shift T and this one works well okay no complaint for this one this one is stuck like glue right then I'm gonna lock this you can see that we are gradually moving towards the other area and again we have let's see what what we have okay remember the uh, the floor tracker so in this case right the tracker showing the arrowhead right reappears again at another frame 
so we can actually relink it back again so right about here all right so we can click on this frame uh click on the trackers okay now it's locked right uh let me just locate that tracker again which is uh tracker number okay if i want to see the number of this tracker i can click on quick display and look at info this is tracker number 10. so we need to go and unlock tracker number 10 and because we want to continue to track it again right at this point where this frame appears so click click on this area to establish a new keyframe and then move it to the correct location which is we previously tracked here okay so we can track we can verify by going back to the last keyframe okay so it's about slightly inwards okay so I'll go back to the frame that we are tracking okay this looks good and we're gonna track continue to track until it disappears so press alt for track and it is staying put which is good and maybe scale this up slightly until it disappears maybe on track back one frame here two three until it disappears Okay, this one need to move down slightly. Okay, now we can lock this one. All right, so if you have tracker points that are appearing and reappearing, right, and if you know where they are, you can use that to reestablish the position again. And this will also help with the uh, parallax calculation. And I notice in the distance, right, we can see a number that is very clear. There's a deck number seven. I'm gonna try to track this uh, number here. And this time I'm gonna use just plain old location for this one. And then just scale this slightly down because this letter D. Maybe I wanna track the, uh, the corner here, right? And then Alt, right mouse click. Okay, this one doesn't work doesn't like it so location doesn't work so I'm going to change to a fine scale this up slightly and then press alt right mouse and you can see that a fine right it is not accurate it jumps to the seven instead so maybe the pattern size is not big enough so I'm gonna undo and I'm gonna track this entire text okay this K is good so I'm gonna just track this whole area, deck 7D. Just gonna track this whole pattern here. So I'm gonna give a distinctive pattern for this a fine tracker to stick onto. So this time it should stick much better for me. Okay, so that's not a good sign because the Maybe I should not track D, I just track further inwards like that. Okay, I'm gonna clear forwards and then press Alt, right mouse button, and then this time I should be able to stick the track. Yes, this is working. and it should disappear and then this uh, deck uh, the letter word deck right will reappear again right about here this frame so let's, let's give it a slightly higher and then enter another keyframe by clicking here and then drag it to the k position again which is right about here okay no, uh, thereabouts right about here all right so let's continue to track so press alt right mouse button and it actually tracks pretty well all the way to the end until it disappears all right okay we're gonna ignore this last frame just get rid of this last frame and then save this okay so again this is going to help in our parallax and we can start to look at this region now and we start to track across this region until we reach the end. 
okay then I'm gonna click on maybe track this feature here am I on a fine let me change the fine and uh, maybe track this pattern here well actually I have uh, two of these here so I don't I don't think I need to track these anymore uh, let's look for something else to track maybe uh, this lamp post here okay and for the lamp post I'm gonna use location and this one is quite distinctive it looks like a letter Y and let's see how much we can track this control T okay, it doesn't like it so I'm gonna change the motion model to something else I'm gonna try a fine control uh, alt right mouse button and it doesn't like that so let me just increase the size alt right mouse button and now it's tracking so that's good and it exits now I'm gonna track backwards all the way to the end all right so this one looks good it is it slides a little bit okay but but since it's so far away i think it is still quite acceptable i'm going to track this other lamp post here scale this up so that you can see a distinctive pattern as it tracks and uh, Okay, use a fine for this and control shift T to track backwards and to the last frame and control T to track forwards until it goes out and it sticks pretty well so I'm gonna lock this control L to lock it okay so now I'm going to track some features on the ground okay so again this one should help with the parallax and you can see a little bit of parallax going going on here look at this lamppost and the, the objects behind so what this have what this means is that I'm actually uh, stepping taking one or two steps sideways when I'm taking this shot All right so which means I need to track these features here okay I need to track maybe this corner over here Maybe I'll start with this one here. Control T to track forwards. Let me undo that because this is location. I use a fine. And let's try that again. Control T. This one tracks forwards. Fine. The last few frames are no good. So I'm going to get rid of this. And then let's go back to the last initial frame and then track backwards. And let's see how it goes again I'm gonna get rid of these frames here just kill them off okay and this is the tracker that I want to save and maybe I want to track this corner here okay let me undo that because uh, I want to establish my all my new trackers as a fine seems to be giving me better results here scale this up slightly then press ctrl T to track forwards uh, let's undo that uh, maybe the search area is not big enough okay and then maybe I want to realign the trackers or rather change the shape of the tracker okay maybe I shouldn't track the patterns behind the tra track things right which are not changing too much behind this area so let's try tracking this and yep we are successful the last few frames I want to get rid of it and let's track backwards from here Control shift T and again this one works well except for this last frame I'm gonna get rid of it and then lock this feature okay to pan your middle mouse click all right okay so let's continue to track and I like this track point here so I'm gonna press ctrl left mouse click 
and again I just want to track this feature here because there are no patterns that are affecting affecting it from behind Control T track forwards and it actually tracks all the way to the end and then I'm going to Control Shift T track backwards and this one locks down really really well so that's good and okay there's no last frames to delete so I can lock this one okay I want to track some road features that are on the road like this one here this one is quite nice to track Control T to track forwards and undo that maybe that one is not big enough Control T and yeah this is sticking in this last frame not so good get rid of it and I'm gonna track backwards from here Control Shift T and yes this is quite locked down I'm going to lock this one now so every single point that you track must be high quality you must know that they they are well tracked before you proceed on to the next tracker okay so right now I'm just tracking for points which I want to see parallax okay and then I see a corner here which is a good track point and hopefully the affine will cooperate with me so that we can track forwards Control T okay maybe the search area is not big enough area of interest not big enough and let's try that again okay it doesn't want to work okay just reduce this a little bit okay alt okay let's go back to that last tracker again okay alt right cursor okay if this one doesn't want to work I'm going to manually force it to track the point that I want using the left right cursor to establish okay maybe there's some color or compression shift you can see the pattern changes slightly that's why it doesn't want to track forward okay let's try one more time alt right mouse click and okay it doesn't want so even if I put two manual keyframes this area doesn't want to track so I will not track this and I'll tr look for something else so if you're desperate right then you sometimes you might end up uh, having to use a bigger tracker because this one is very close to the edge but what I like is that it gives really good parallax motion okay let me see whether I can track this one let's start off from the point where we can see it a little bit clearer and we are going to reshape this until it matches the perspective okay it should be actually we should check uh, track as perspective let's try this one so alt right mouse button and right now I say it's locked down so sometimes you just have to use the correct motion model which seems to do the trick so alt shift control shift T to track backwards and this time perspective wins over a fine I think this one works all right so I'll lock this one and let's see you can see gradually we are nearing the end of our range okay now we have a few uh, trackers that have reached the end of uh, the 223 range so right now we just need to track a few more points and then we are ready to solve okay so we're gonna track some uh, features that are far away for example like uh, this cross here which is very obvious so I'm gonna holding down the control and left mouse click now I just have to make sure that the lamppost doesn't cover it okay it doesn't so I'm gonna 
bring down the control and left mouse click and select this region okay this is a fine so I press control T and no problem this one tracks easily control shift T track backwards and it starts to disconnect right about here okay let me say the pre last frame um, actually I can I can manually just move it into place which is about here so it's slightly higher okay, let me just manually adjust this until it matches the scale you can see some lens distortion uh, towards the end here you can see the image stretching okay when it's at the lens center it's not so much but when it's at the edge of the lens then you can see that it is stretching okay so later when we are solving we need to compensate for this uh, for this uh, distortion lens distortion going on and you can see some of the region are starting to turn gray that means we have a lot of uh, track points here that is good for solving okay right now I want to track some features that are closer but uh, they are on a lower deck so this 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 looks like a good feature to track I'm going to track this feature here and I'm going to use perspective again this is a habit of mine I just want to distort this to match the perspective and then I'm going to track forwards Control T and this one tracks really well Control shift t track the other way around and we got a good track okay it sticks well so i'm going to lock that can we try a few more okay maybe this uh lamp post here this uh, black spot here is quite contrasty uh, should I track this one? Yeah, maybe I'll track this one. Scale this down a bit. I'll reshape this a little bit. And I want to track maybe dead center. Then control T. Okay, it doesn't want to track this one. Uh, okay, I think maybe there is some uh, parallax going on there let's try okay this one doesn't want to track so I'm gonna try to use location instead okay because it's just a simple black dot so I'm gonna use location location motion model and hopefully this one will stay right in the center here I'm gonna press ctrl T and it, it doesn't want to track so let me get rid of this maybe this feature is not good but I'm gonna try one more a fine Make sure I don't try. I don't want to put the region uh, behind the trees over there because there will be some pattern change. Let's see whether this one works. Okay, Alt right mouse click, and this one, yes, it sticks, so that's good. Right, I'm just holding down Alt right arrow key all the way until it tracks every frame. Then Control Shift T to track backwards, and this one works. So sometimes uh, you don't give up on if one motion model doesn't work just try another motion model and after a while you'll figure out like which one is the best motion model for what type of features so in other words uh, you only get better with tracking from experience okay right now I just want to track uh, these patterns right they're very far away in this building here so these are wonderful patterns that we can track and are we at a fine? Yeah, a fine should work with this very well. Then I'm going to press Ctrl T to track forwards. And this one is locked. Then Ctrl Shift T to track backwards. And we have a good track. And we can lock this one. And let's move on to another track. Maybe I'll track this block of flats here. Again, I'm going to use a fine. Got a pattern that you can lock on control shift t then let's go to the 
last frame that it started from oops I should press ctrl T instead ctrl T and it tracks all the way and it is sticking like glue so that's good so I'm gonna lock this one and you can see that our red region is getting less and less and that means that we are very close to solving our shot so what I need to do right now is I, I again I just want to, to track a few more points that are on the ground that is close to the ground like maybe this this track point here okay this is an, another deck that is on the lower portion of the ground so I want to scale this up and uh, this is a fine but it should work on this as well a fine can sort of like work like a if you like like perspective and press ctrl T to track forwards and this one actually fails let me undo that and let's see what's wrong okay maybe I need to change the shape of the search pattern and press alt right mouse button okay it doesn't want to track so I might have to use perspective for this one change the perspective alt right mouse button and it doesn't want to track so what is the problem okay let's increase the search area increase the uh, area of interest alt right mouse button and it still doesn't want to track okay I'm gonna get rid of this tracker and I'm going to create a new perspective tracker okay, sometimes the tracker just if it fails to work then just delete it and then try another motion model okay alt right mouse button and this one doesn't want to track okay so we're going to use the simplest one I'm going to use location and holding down the control left mouse click and let's track this point here and press alt right mouse button and it still doesn't want to track as, as well control T also doesn't want to track as well okay this is this is strange okay, I want to try let's move it to this location instead at least this is quite contrasty so control T and again for some reason this this just doesn't want to track okay maybe I will okay sometimes um, maybe it'll be a good thing right to actually start from some like uh, in, in the midpoint all right like this one uh, towards the end here is quite stationary so we can maybe track okay we got this object on the ground here okay I'm gonna use location to track this it's quite contrasty it's a highlight over there then I'm gonna track since this is a few frames near to the end I'm gonna track forwards and then control shift T track backwards and this time we have a track point that sticks pretty well let's go to the last frame and yes we can use this one and what do we have here we have now completely have enough uh, points to solve this shot okay so uh, I'm gonna track a few more okay just to make sure that I have enough uh, good track points at the end especially for the parallax okay it's all about the parallax okay towards the end right like this region here is mostly a tripod shot there's no not much parallax okay there's a little bit of parallax going on when uh, from this region to this region from the way I can see like if I lock this as a center you can see this this corner here is moving sideways so this region here is definitely there is definitely parallax going on here okay so maybe I want to track okay, I have enough points here okay, right now I'm just deciding uh, where do I want to track maybe I want to track uh, like this object here Okay, I'm going to use a fine try a fine over here okay press ctrl T to track forwards then 
control shift T to track backwards and it looks good and then lock this and I made a very very dangerous mistake that is I did not save my file so let's go and save the file now so save as so this one is the manual match move workflow underscore zero one and then save so now I have enough track uh, trackers to actually solve the shot you can see that uh, we have the uh, yellow green zone here and uh, how many trackers do we have we have 41 trackers so pretty much the same as the previous time that I have I think the previous time I have about uh, 42 trackers okay but let's let's try solving it first so if we can't get a decent solve out from this uh, what we can do is we can uh, add in a few more trackers to help us solve the shot so let's let's try solving it first okay so let's go to solve and uh, we can enable keyframe keyframe is basically to um, let the tracker decide which are the best keyframes right to solve the shot and uh, we just hit soft camera motion and see what happens I'm ex half expecting this to blow up and which it did so we get a a uh, very high error of 27.24 and uh, it chose a keyframe of 1 and 11 for us and if you look at the error curves okay the blue the blue line indicates uh, a region right which is very high in error which is this this portion here okay so you can actually come to this region and see whether there are, are there any trackers there are too many trackers missing or uh, missing or appearing suddenly sometimes this will introduce this kind of error but then again you can also we know that we all our trackers or majority of our trackers are good uh, we can try another method which is to actually uncheck keyframe and manually enter the keyframes ourselves so generally you can see that the the front part region here is solved pretty well the error the blue line here shows a good result um, and then when all of a sudden when we come over here it start to lose information doesn't have enough information to uh, to solve this motion here so what we can do is that we can help it along by uh, choosing which area which we think have enough parallax information uh, for me I think we can start by choosing 20 40 between 20 and 40 because this portion here I'm actually moving forward and sideways so I'm gonna manually enter 20 and 40 so and then we can do the solve again we got a solve error of 27.24 but that is expected for this shot because this shot is also very long so I'm gonna hit solve and then see uh, what result that we get okay now we get 17.37 but the blue uh, line is not getting flat so I'm gonna be experimenting with this until I get a low error before I start to introduce the refinements so I'm gonna try uh, maybe um, let's see maybe I'll try this one here 110 to 20 so you can manually enter here 110 to 120 and then we can do the solve again and now we can see all of a sudden we get 1.74 okay this is actually a fabulous uh, fabulous result so the next thing we want to do is we can enable focal length and then uh, keep our fingers crossed and see whether it can go below 1.74 and then we just hit solve and it actually went down to 1.18 so we can also introduce uh, like radial distortion because remember this lens right that I used to shoot this has a lot of distortion uh, it is a it is an a spherical lens so uh, and it's also shot at I believe uh, 24 24 millimeters or 26 millimeters so that's why the distortion towards the end is uh, for the perspective distortion is quite uh, quite quite uh, great so maybe we can uh, enable this 10 uh, radio distortion and see whether we can bring down this area some more and then we click soft camera motion and no it doesn't it actually went up instead so 
let me uncheck that and say soft camera motion again and you can see sometimes this will happen okay it will, it will go back and forth and then you will get this problem so if you have your camera lens information what you can do is you can go over to the track and then under the uh, camera and the, uh, ca the camera width is a, is a 5D Mark III so it's a full frame sensor for the lens itself actually it actually got very close 24 millimeters is <laughs> is bang on all right so this is the uh, the uh, the effect uh, the results that it got from okay so maybe we can try changing it to uh, 24 and then we can try to solve it again and then see what error we get okay we got 1.81 all right and uh, or sometimes sometimes if you change the keyframe again you can uh, try to get the error down some more so one one way that we can try to get the error down is to actually look at the uh, error the errors of our trackers so for those trackers with a high error point like for this one uh, for track number 22 okay where is track number 22 we need to select tracker number 22 okay let me just press L to lock it in the center ah there it is so now it is saying that tracker 22 has a error of 2.7 pixels so we can go over the track the weight we reduce the weight maybe change it to 0.7 and then let's look for another high error point which is this one this one we enter a lot of keyframes for this one so this for this one we just reduce the weight to 0 0.7 as well and then especially uh this one this one is seven so this one is quite high i'm going to bring this down to 0 0.7 as well Okay, what tracker is this? Tracker number 10. Oh, tracker number 10 is this one. So this is one is understood because it appears and then reappears again. All right, so let's let's solve again. And now I brought it, to, brought it down to 1.52. Okay, it's not really going down that much. Okay, but we, we are getting there. So maybe uh, we will try another uh, new keyframe variation i'm going to uncheck focal length and then try solving the camera again and now you can see everything just explodes again you can actually click solve several times and then see what happens see whether you get a low result and if not we can again one one more time try to uh, find a keyframe that is that might work for us so try 140 to maybe 150 and let's solve this okay this one doesn't work let's hit solve again solve again okay it doesn't work okay maybe 160 and 170 okay 2.23 promising let's try focal length okay now it's not going down that much so let's try another range Fifty, sixty. Okay, fourteen, fifty. That's not not very good. Okay, maybe ninety, hundred. Let's try this one. Ninety, hundred is. Okay, let's give it a shot. Okay, you never know. One point three seven. This is this is very good. All right, so let's enable focal length solve the camera and it actually went up so this is <laughs> let's try hitting solve several times I see it just goes up and down 1.27 and so it, it blows up again so let's undo that let's go back to 1.27 and then we turn on radial distortion and then solve and it is not it's not helping and then we you can see the uh, the console is like it's not it's not able to solve this okay so let's see whether we actually need to put in any more uh, additional uh, what I call that uh, trackers all right so let's take a look at our camera again 24 yep this is fine 
uh, let's reset this to zero and run this off again okay 1.59 uh, then focal length solve again 1.52 radial distortion 0 0.95 can see now we are making a breakthrough so what I did was uh, I just went to reset the uh, lens distortion model and then I resolve again a 0 0.95 I think um, will be good enough okay but let's try to do a scene setup okay let's do a scene setup and then uh, see what we get all right so let's go over to set up the floor first so we got a plenty of trackers on this floor here one two three I'm gonna select three uh, points which I know definitely are on a flat plane and then I said this is the floor and then I want to select uh, a point which I want to be the origin maybe this point here I want to set it as the origin okay and then um, okay I do not have any points uh, to the immediate right of this but we I have points that on the immediate south of this point here so I'm gonna click this point and then I'll say that this is the uh, y-axis Okay, so they can see the orientation of the layout is now matching the camera so next I want to uh, change the scale because right now the scale is too small so I'm gonna select two points and then I want to set a scale of maybe six and set scale and now I can see the grid patterns uh, basically uh, you are you are simply saying that uh, the the distance between this point and this point is like six meters okay just as an example Okay, maybe uh, in real life right maybe this is not really six meters this is uh, about two car lengths two car lengths probably four meters or four blender units and then I'll set scale okay and then this this will make much more sense and now I can say uh, set background set the background so I can see this through the background you can see that it's a little bit crooked but we can fix that in layout and then finally we set up the tracking scene and now we can see the trackers appearing and also our camera trajectory which we are going to see whether is it working and we can see a little bit of problems here especially when the camera is uh, panning up and then uh, there's a lot of movement but as the camera pans down uh, everything seems to be fine okay so how can we fix this all right so let's go back to the camera view so how do we fix this uh, portion part where it gets down and then you can see there's a lot of shifting going on okay this happens uh, because we uh, we are losing a lot of our trackers right uh, from from the ground level okay from the ground level so it's very difficult to keep track of the uh, the parallax motion so what I can do is that I can try to improve the solve by tracking these corners here All right so what I'm gonna do right is I'm gonna track track these corners here so using the trackers and then try to improve the error because right now you can see over here the cube is like shaking quite badly after it's out of the scene right you can see the camera is moving quite a bit around here so this is something that I want to try to fix on a track uh, maybe I'll just use a easy and quick tracker like uh, location then press alt right mouse button and then just continue to track until it disappears okay this one is good Okay, and then I want to lock this one. Okay, and then I want to track another one point maybe here. Alt, right mouse button, and then just okay, it's sliding. Let me undo that. Okay, let me go back to the first point here and then delete everything out the reason why it's sliding is because it's also tracking the features above there so I'm going to reduce this tracker size then track forwards again and this time it is staying put until to this point here
Okay, I think I have to track maybe the darker shadow area instead. I'm gonna get rid of the track information and then maybe move the tracker point here instead. Track the actually the dark shadow area here. Press Ctrl T. Hopefully it will track all the way. No, it doesn't want to track. Okay, I'm gonna use another tracker. Uh, I'm going to use perspective and track this area here. Press Ctrl T and then, yep, this one works. I'm going to lock this one. I'm going to track another perspective shot here. Okay, this one works as well. The only bad thing is that all of them are just going to disappear around the same time. And when you have markers disappearing at the same time, it's going to introduce jitters in your camera solve. Uh, that's why I needed to track this uh, lamp post because it's the only point of reference showing me where the ground level is at. Okay, with these extra track points, I can go back to the solve again, and I can try my luck to solve this. Okay, it might blow up. Okay, but I'm just gonna give it, give it a shot. See what happens. Yeah, uh, just as expected, <laughs> it blew up, so the error just went uh, haywire again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset the uh, the k values back to zero. The this is what we call the lens distortion values. I set it back to zero. Uh, the lens is generally is at twenty four. Um, unfortunately we couldn't lock this value here and then we're going to uncheck the uh, focal length and radial distortion calculation and then I'm going to hit uh, soft camera motion and see what it gives us uh, so, so far the area is 48.49 if I hit solve again and then see whether I can get a better result Okay, I'm gonna try to give it auto keyframe and see what happens. And no, it actually blew up. It's even worse. So <laughs> I'm gonna try to find another region. Okay, you can press Shift S to set a keyframe here. Shift S, keyframe B, and then solve again. Seven point seven. Okay, not something that I want. Okay, but let's reduce the range here. Nope. Nope. Okay, maybe 30, 40. Nope, it's not working and Try uh, one one zero and one two zero. One point six six. Okay, we're getting somewhere. All right, let's hit solve again. Let's make sure that it's stable. Okay, one point six six is good. Now I'm gonna uh, click on focal length and then solve this. 1.32 and then we're gonna solve the uh, radio distortion okay so this is <laughs> zero is impossible so uh, okay we still see this error here Okay, 2.67, let's try radio distortion. Okay, so this, that's why uh, solving a manual shot, and especially for this shot that is so long, right, is gonna take some time. So, patience. Okay, let's try this. Let's try a higher keyframe number. 
170 and 180 and then let's reset the values again and solve the camera motion we got 1.36 all right then we get a uh, focal length to solve this 1.36 again radio distortion 1.29 okay not exactly the number that i want but at least this time if you take a look at the camera motion because every time you solve right uh, it actually updates the uh, motion okay so let me just set up tracking scene one more time hit set up tracking scene yep it actually update updates the camera motion so this is not uh, this is not a value that I like so uh, it's probably I will have to very very carefully go through all the really bad trackers and then do a solve again okay tracker number 10 is like the tracker that is giving the worst value here Okay, let me select number 10 and maybe bring down its solve uh, weight to 0 0.3 and then let's solve again 0 0.64 okay this is a good value all right and then and yes and yes this is looking good so you can as you can see here all because of a single tracker Okay, this single tracker here has an error of seven pixels and I'm pretty sure that I have tracked this properly because if you take a look at the uh, the position and when it reappears again I'm actually tracked it is tracked at the right position so okay I have no idea why this is uh, causing such a high tracking error okay so let me go back and check can. let me see whether is it sliding or anything like that just to inspect I, and I, th I think this is a this is a good track okay I don't know what is causing it to why is it contributing so much to the error okay anyway 0.64 I'm happy with this so I'm gonna save this as solved let's check let's take a look at the motion of the camera okay let's go to layout let's open up a layout window general layout and press 0 in your number pad to go to the uh, camera view and then you can see right now the camera motion is very smooth okay there's a few snapping motion going on around here which is not very good okay but generally speaking the uh, Okay, the motion here is from the beginning portion is at least is quite quite good all right so i'm going to go back to motion tracking and then see whether i can re-establish the scene again okay i'm going to click on setup tracking scene see whether it works on it i'm going to do the whole process again select three tracker points set it as the floor then set this point as the origin set these two tracker points as uh, scale number four okay and then set this as the uh, y-axis and set up tracking scene okay this point here is not very good I see okay I can see from this region here nothing is tracking properly anymore you can see the the motion is <laughs> the camera motion is not moving correctly and I'm not I'm not really happy with this <laughs> so I'm actually going to continue to to solve this okay I'm gonna continue to work on this until I get it to have a uh, much better solve so I can hit the solve uh, camera motion again see what happens see what it blows up 
Okay, it actually gives me an even lower number, which is 0 0.2 is kind of impossible. Let's just let's take a look. Okay, so the orientation is a bit off right now, so let's let's start one more time. Okay, I'm gonna click on this uh, three points to set it as the floor. Sometimes we might receive something called a false positive. You might get a ridiculously low soft uh, error, and then you might think, "Oh, great! Uh, this is this is fantastic!" All right, but actually, uh, it might not be a good sign. All right, so I'm gonna try it out. Ah, okay so we do have an error here you can see uh, you can see a red zone here so this is actually not <laughs> this is not a, a uh, the solve that I'm looking for so th this is uh, like what I say a false positive so let's reset everything again let's set this to zero 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 and then uh, we are gonna uncheck focal length and then just solve everything just hit solve again multiple times sometimes you do to solve it several times right to see whether you can get a better result okay it's stuck at 2.94 maybe i'll change the uh keyframe value a bit let's see whether i would have a change in value So uh, when you're solving this kind of shots, right, sometimes uh, every shot is different and yeah, sometimes you get the result you want, sometimes it doesn't. So okay, 3.56, let's just try focal length to see what happens. Okay, it's still 3.36, okay, now you can see the trackers are all bunched up together, so this is not really a, a good sign, even though the errors uh, seem to be quite low. Okay, I'm going to enable radio distortion and see what happens. 0 0.5. Okay. 0 0.5 seems promising. The tracker point seems to be. Yeah, this time it seems to be behaving now, except the motion. I have to set up the tracking scene again. Alright, so set this one, uh, set three points as the ground floor the floor and set this point as the origin and set this one as the y-axis and then I'll set these two points as scale number four and set up background cycle tracking scene and it should yeah okay let's take a look at the layout just to make sure that this time everything is working yes okay so yes this is this is much better this is closer to what i want so this is the result of um let's say the human intervention portion now this portion here still doesn't look that great but at least right is much better than the earlier attempts where this this part is jittering all over the place okay i'm very happy with this this is much better i'm gonna save this 
and let's take a look at the motion tracking so we got an error of 0 0.5 so in the end we managed to get the solve that I want so this is the this is the uh, the solve error curve and everything looks fine and the motion also looks good I'm gonna select this cube press G Z 1 just to bring it up to the same ground level and uh, yeah just gonna check to see that it is uh, moving properly and yes everything is smooth there's no crazy jitters going on and right now you can bring in your assets you can light up your scene uh, for this shot so I'm gonna get rid of this cube um, now before I get rid of this cube I'm gonna maybe uh, change it into sort of like a uh, uh, a marker so I'm gonna turn on my markers in my layout view so you can click down on the viewport overlays turn on motion tracking and you can just make sure that the uh, markers right are not are staying put uh, are sticking to the plate right for on the features so far so good it looks good All right so I'm gonna rescale this uh, I'm gonna go to edit mode press tab go to edit mode and then I'm gonna uh, press Z go to wireframe and then press number three I'll select like the top face and then just scale it down press shift I oh, sorry control I to invert then press S shift Z to scale it down so it becomes a very narrow pyramid and then press tab again to go out to edit mode go to object mode All right so I'm gonna select this uh, pyramid and I'm gonna apply a array modifier moving along the uh, Y axis maybe just give it a few few duplicates so I'm gonna use these right okay 36 is a bit too much maybe I'll just give it about five right these are going to be used as my uh, sort of like my layout indicators right so I'm gonna go to the side view press number three and I'm gonna take note of all the trackers that I know that are supposed to be on the ground so first let's go back to the, our layout view so we can go back to a motion tracking okay there's one more thing about layout that I did not mention that is uh, Okay, I'm gonna select this uh, this tracker and I'm gonna go to the custom color presets then I'm gonna say um, call it as an object and it's got a pink I'm gonna pick the trackers and then I'm gonna assign them as object object basically pick all those uh, trackers right which you are which you know that they are going to be on the ground so just pick object okay the reason is because later when I go to layout with the uh, see now I can see them as pink pink trackers so this will help me a bit in uh, doing my final layout you want to change this one to pink color as well so go to layout and then go to number three and then you can see that they are supposed to all line up in the straight plane because we know that these are, are actually on the ground and so far my uh, array pyramids are sitting on the ground so I know that my layout is good so what if you like for example let's say orientation wise let's say you see the the this green line right is not lining up against this uh, let me go to wireframe you can see this green line is not lining against this uh, car park line markers we, where we know that these are actually on a straight line so how do we fix the layout so it's actually very simple first you change your rotation transform pivot point to 3d cursor then you click on the camera which you can click on this outline here and then with the uh, cursor at the origin you just press R followed by Z to rotate you can just manually rotate this until you get it lined up so for some if some for some reason right your uh, the level of your lineup is not correct you can press G followed by Z you can bring it up or down okay and another thing is if you press R followed by X you can rotate it you can tilt it right so I find that this is the easiest and fastest way to manually uh, move or rotate or like for example I can press G followed by uh, X so that can slide this uh, along the plane here or you can press G followed by Y to change the lineup okay very very easily all right okay so now my uh, okay 
I don't need it to move. I'm going to change this to zero so that they are all in a straight line. And yeah, so right now you can test it out and check that the uh, the pyramids are not sliding. Let me just move these uh, pyramids. G, Y, push them back. And then just increase the number of counts so that I can check that they are stuck to the ground and which they are, which they're supposed to be. Right now, uh, I've taken a, a 360 HDR uh, image for this environment using my 1X. So I'm gonna uh, bring in the image. So go over to the environment, click under the color, then bring in environment texture. Then go and open up the image, which is this one over here, if I can show the thumbnail here. And then uh, in order to see the image, you will have to render in rendered view and you can see the orientation of this uh, this HDR is wrong okay so I'm gonna change the orientation of this HDR to do that you have to go over to uh, compositing and then you have to actually we should open up a shading not compositing go over to the shading uh, tab and then uh, go over to the camera view and then instead of looking through the camera view, uh, we, sh we should be changing not, uh, we shouldn't be looking at this. Uh, okay, this this HDRI is the default HDRI. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna open up the uh, shader editor and then I'm gonna use the world. And I'm gonna change this uh, view I'm gonna apply a a UV. Okay, I'm gonna apply a UV uh, coordinates onto this image. So to do that, okay, first I'm gonna enable my uh, add-ons called Node Wrangler. Okay, this Node Wrangler will help me add a uh, texture setup. Okay, there's a shortcut key which is Control T. So, oh, okay, that's too much. I'm gonna select on this image and add a texture setup. And then with this texture setup, I'm gonna switch over to my uh, 3D view, 3D view part. Actually, this is set to 3D view part, but the HDRI is uh, linked to this matte cap. Okay, so I'm gonna change the matte cap uh, to my own custom. Actually, no, I'm gonna disable this one scene world all right so change it to scene world and then i'm going to use the rotation of the z-axis to reorient it to the correct orientation now i've taken this hdr in a slightly different location so i'm actually at the ground deck but now i should have the more or less the same lighting conditions and the reflections uh, for the scene you can also uh, apply the brightness i can make it brighter or darker let's bring it up a little bit brighter so let's go back to our layout and then now you can see that our uh, the HDR orientation is correct. Now I do not want to see the HDR. I want to, I want to see what is uh, what I look through the camera. So you click on this uh, under the uh, render options, render properties under film. You can turn it to transparent. Okay, so now we don't see the uh, HDR, but the HDR is now producing light and lighting these. Uh, these markers here uh, and next we also want to increase the transparency uh, the opacity of this uh, back background so you need to select the camera go over to the backdrop click on the camera go to viewport uh, sorry background images and then opacity jack it up to one okay so there you go we have the lighting of this uh, panels or rather these uh, markers are done properly so next, how do we bring in an asset and then do a quick uh, render or animation of this? So uh, if you watched my previous uh, lineup, which is this one. Okay, I managed to bring in the, uh, the craft. All right, and you can even see the shadow that is being uh, rendered on this shot here 
Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, in uh, if you're using Windows, uh, it comes with this Windows 10. It comes with Paint 3D. So you run Paint 3D, and if you go to the 3D library, you can search for all these very nice and free assets. Okay, so you just uh, bring in one asset, and then you go and save it out as a 3D model. So the model type that I'm saving it as is uh, known as a 3D GLB format. And I save it, I give it a name and then save it out. And then I'm going to import it into Blender. So go and file import GLB, which is this one, uh, GITF 2.0. And then go and bring in the uh, asset. Okay, now when you bring in the asset, right, the asset is really, really small. And uh, you can see that it's hiding over here. So we're going to bring it up. So press G followed by Z to bring it up. And you can see that it already comes with its own materials and textures, which is great. Uh, it already comes with this uh, root uh, controller or this uh, empty handle. So I want to detach it from this root. So I'm going to select this model and then press Alt P to unparent it. And then I'm going to get rid of this root. Just press X to delete it. Then I can select this object, press G, Z and then press S to scale it up. Okay, right now my scale is uh, based on this uh, pivot transform point. I want to change it to the median, uh, median so that I can, when I hit scale, uh, I can scale it accordingly. All right, so now I got my uh, spacecraft brought in and it's properly uh, lit. Press G, Y and then press R, Z to rotate this. I'm going to select these pyramids and then move them along the X axis and move them back slightly like that. Okay, then I can press G, Z, bring this down, G, Y, push it back. So now you can see that it is nicely matched to the scene. So, what about the ground shadows? How do I actually generate that? Now, for the ground shadow, right, um, you can create a material by following this tutorial by uh, Blender Tutorial uh, called the EV Shadow Catcher with a blender 2.90 so just go and google for this one and then create this uh, material and then you should be able to have uh, create a material that catches the shadow for your uh, for your EV scene okay so for me I'm just going to uh, bring it import it from my other scene so I'm gonna append it from my uh, other scene here the car park salt because I'm not gonna recreate that one again so go to object and uh, it should be the ground plane and then I'll just append it and this ground plane uh, should be able to uh, capture the shadow so the original plane I'm gonna get rid of it so this is the ground I'm gonna press X and then delete it so this uh, there's a point light I also want to get rid of this point light I want to make sure that this object is within the foreground uh, foreground collection background collection currently is there's nothing in this background so actually I can I can delete it so now right now I have this uh, ground plane there is no lights in this scene so uh, I will not be able to cast any shadows so you in order to see any shadows right you need to create a sunlight so I'm going to create a sunlight shift a light you can create sunlight and see once you have the sunlight you can see the light uh, casting a shadow uh, right below here so I'm going to increase the strength until the uh, the plane right is uh, almost invisible so right now this uh, this light is simulating the Sun really really well and because we want to match the orientation of the Sun so you can um, we can temporarily uh, change the uh, bring back the HDR again by going to the render settings under the film and then make it not transparent again and then we're going to minimize screen and drag we just want to find where the general direction of the Sun actually this is an overcast sky when I took this HDR picture so I'm going to select the sunlight uh, and then just use the rotation tool rotate it until it is like facing me from my point of view because I want to rotate it at an angle so that it's casting a shadow downwards right so you can grab this rotation uh, 
grab this rotation and manipulator and then we generally get our shadows okay uh, and then now we can make it transparent again so now you can see we have some really nice looking shadows and we can start to animate this and make it fly out okay if we want and for this particular plane here you can actually uh, because that now that we have this uh, properly tracked we can uh, reshape this shadow plane or remodel it until it matches the uh, scene right now this shadow plane is huge so I'm going to scale it down Let's scale this down uh, right about here and then I'm gonna go to edit mode go to edge mode G Y just pull this out G Y and then push it upwards and then G X push it outward this way and uh, yeah just press G X and then you can press E to start off uh, then E followed by Z and press uh, E again followed by X to push it forward and press E again followed by Z to get let it go down to the bottom level then press E again to extrude then followed by X to pull it out until it is uh, catching shadow on the lower level so that if I were to animate my craft taking off now I'm gonna get out to object mode so grab the craft I'm gonna turn on auto key and then I'm gonna press I to insert a uh, location and rotation key for the craft so the craft is gonna take off press you can press G to make it fly up All right and then press G again to make it move forward and then you can turn on this uh, manipulator so they can manipulate it with more precision and maybe I'll just push it further away so you can see the shadow and then as the camera pans you want to move the object right so that is in the cap the camera center view so I'm gonna move this slightly higher because if I move this across the uh, lamp it will break the illusion and I will have to create a mask and composite thing to, uh, to composite this and then I'll just push this forwards And have it fly away and then rotate along the Z axis and press G Z Z so G uh, Y Y so that it moves forwards then G Z Z so it flies up all right so you got your animation done and if you want you can render this out so right now I'm gonna hide all my uh, features here I'm gonna hide the floor the axis 3d cursor all these other extra stuff and then I can actually render this out in viewport rendering so let's render out the movie so go over to the render settings and go over to the desktop I'm gonna render it out on the desktop then I call this uh, car park UFO click accept I render it out straight as a FF MPEG video encoding I'm gonna use MPEG4 and that's pretty much it all I need to do right now is just click on view and viewport render animation and it will render the entire animation out okay so again this is like a very rough uh, rough example of how I will lay this out uh, and okay let's take a look at the finished video and this is this is the result so it took a while to like uh, track track this shot okay but uh, you can understand the value of uh, spending time and then uh, really trying to get the best 
keyframe solutions right to solve this shot right and uh, to be honest this is how I worked when I was uh, at Industrial Light and Magic Singapore uh, solving all these uh, shots for the not a few few movies that I worked on right so we never use auto tracking at all everything is manual and you literally you had to make sure the track is very very accurate because uh, I remember uh, what one of our trainers and the supervisors told us if there is a bit of errors if there's a bit of sliding in the 3d L, uh, in your CG elements it's going to look very obvious when it's projected on a cinema screen so the tracking has to be very very precise and what I'm showing you here is like uh, basically the uh, the workflow for most uh, if not all of the major VFX uh, match moving match moving or layout departments okay okay so I think this video has gone long enough and uh, I will stop the recording now okay for those of you who are watching this uh, I want to thank you for watching this entire video I hope this uh, video right uh, provided you with uh, more insights into how to track and solve uh, especially for these kinds of shots all right because this shot to be honest is not an easy shot to track and solve as you can see uh, even with my experience so there's a lot of uh, back and forth and uh, troubleshooting in order to get this to work but um, in order to get good at um, match moving I guess you really have to spend time and track all kinds of shots and uh, to be really honest right the kind of shots that we that I worked on when I was working at uh, ILM uh, sometimes the the plates are just worse than this there's a lot of camera shakes a lot of motion blur and they're like smokes and sparks all over the place and we had to track trackers that appear uh, and disappear so yeah sometimes uh, there are shots that literally it took me days right to to try to to fix or try to solve accurately okay so that's a little bit of insight uh, for you guys right so I'm gonna edit this video and uh, maybe uh, speed up some of the sections and create an, maybe a shorter version of this video uh, so this is the longer version of the video for those of you who are willing to sit through this entire uh, workflow process and I hope that it is uh, this information is useful to to all of you all right thank you for watching